Man, as a kid, I would have killed for my timeouts to only last two minutes. Although, maybe not quite as much if I had to spend them in a glass box with thousands of people watching, while my friends had to do extra work because of my screw-up. Welcome back to NHL 101. And yes, as you probably guessed, we are continuing our series on penalties. And specifically in this video, we're going to be talking about minor penalties. If you watched the first video in this series breaking down the basics of the different types of penalties in the game of hockey, or the NHL specifically, then you'll already have some idea of what a minor penalty is. If you're new to hockey and you haven't seen that one though, I would suggest probably checking that one out first and I'll leave a link to it down in the description. But just as a refresher, minor penalties are the most common types of penalties in hockey and come with a two minute timeout of sorts where the player called for the penalty has to go to the penalty box and spend two minutes there while their team plays a man down. Although that two minute time in the penalty box can be cut short if the opposing team scores a goal while they are on the power play, with that player serving the two minutes in the penalty box, at which point they get to come out regardless of how much time is left on the penalty and resume five on five play. And it is also worth remembering that most minor penalties can be turned into a double minor or major penalty at the discretion of the referees if the infraction is particularly egregious or causes injury. With that said though, let's start looking a little bit more specifically at some of these minor penalties, starting with the ones that are most commonly called as they're the ones you're most likely to see as you start watching hockey. So let's get started with tripping. Now, this one may seem pretty straightforward. Most of us know what it means to trip someone, and just like how it's frowned upon in most of society to trip someone in the middle of the street, it's also frowned upon in the game of hockey to trip someone on ice with knife shoes attached to their feet. But as is the case with most penalties in most sports, not all trips are created equal. Even outside of the fact that there is a fair amount of judgment on the part of the referee to determine what is a trip and what isn't, not every time that a player gets tripped is it actually a tripping penalty. For example, if a player accidentally trips another player while making a play on the puck, then that isn't technically a tripping call. Now, obviously, there's a lot of gray area on what is accidental and what's going for the puck versus just trying to slow the other guy down, but again, that's where the referee judgment comes in. All that aside, though, otherwise, tripping is pretty straightforward. It's just called on a player when they use their stick or any part of their body to trip another player while not making a play on the puck. It's also probably worth mentioning here that while this is typically a skater on skater penalty, it can also be called against a goaltender if they are seen to have intentionally tripped an opposing player. Although that's not super common as most of the time if the goalie does trip someone, it's an accidental part of the play while the goalie's trying to get the puck away from the goal. And finally with tripping, it is also one of the more common penalties that can be called that leads to a penalty shot. And while penalty shots aren't very common for a trip or really at all at the NHL level, it still can be called if the player who was tripped is seen as having lost a significant scoring chance. Usually that comes if they were on a breakaway with nobody between them and the goal, other than the goalie of course. The second most commonly called penalty to tripping, hooking is another penalty aimed at preventing the unfair impeding of an opposing player. And with hooking, this one is a little bit more straightforward as it is pretty much called any time a player uses their stick to hook onto an opposing player, impeding their progress, whether or not they have the puck. Really, the only exception here is if they use their stick to hook onto the opposing player's stick while that player has the puck, in which case that is allowed as long as they don't hook onto any of the player's body parts. And like tripping with hooking, again because this is another penalty that is usually caused by a last act of desperation by a defending player who's been beat, it is one of the more commonly called penalties that can lead to a penalty shot. In fact, while tripping is a more common penalty, hooking is the most common penalty that could lead to a penalty shot. Though it is only called about half as often as either tripping or hooking, Holding is another similar interference type of penalty that is another one of the more commonly called penalties in the NHL. This is again a pretty straightforward penalty and if you're familiar with football and what holding is there, 
It's basically the same idea here. You just can't use your arms or hands to impede the progress of an opposing player. And then of course there's interference, which is kind of a catch-all for a lot of these same things, especially with hooking and holding, but on players without possession of the puck. Basically, you're just not allowed to impede the progress of any opposing player if they don't have possession of the puck, or check an opposing player who doesn't have the puck. Some other, though less common ways that players can get called for interference is either intentionally knocking the stick out of an opposing player's hand, or hitting a loose stick or piece of debris of some kind towards a player who has the puck and distracting them or knocking the puck out of their possession. This is also the first penalty that we've talked about that can get called on somebody on the bench if they were to somehow interfere either with their hand or stick with either the puck or a player passing by the bench. Another one of the categories of penalties is stick penalties, which technically hooking is a part of, but we're going to start here with slashing. It's a penalty that gets called on a player for swinging their stick at an opponent, whether it makes contact with them or not. Now, with slashing, we get back quite a bit of that gray area that we talked about with tripping before, as there is a lot of judgment on the part of a referee that can come into whether or not slashing gets called. And that's largely because there is a lot of stick fighting that goes on in hockey, especially between players who are either trying to get or maintain possession of the puck. So any swing a player makes of their stick towards an opponent that is deemed by a referee as being an attempt to get possession of the puck from that player would not count as slashing. But it definitely does get called more often than not if a player uses a distinctive chopping motion with their stick, especially if they end up making contact with the hands of the opposing player. And it is that somewhat more violent nature that there is to slashing, as well as some of these other penalties that we're going to be talking about for a little bit, as opposed to the ones that we've talked about up till this point, that can have these ones lead to that double minor at the discretion of the referee, or even major penalty depending on the severity of the infraction, especially if an injury is resulting in the play. Though with that said, well, I wouldn't necessarily go so far as to say that it's rare that a minor penalty gets turned into a major, it definitely is somewhat uncommon. Though one penalty that can end up going that way, maybe more often than some of these other ones even, would be high sticking. Now, first of all, with high sticking, this one can get a little bit confusing because there are sort of two different types of high sticking in hockey, one of which isn't even a penalty, and that's just when a player hits a puck with their stick while the stick is above the crossbar of the goal. That kind of high sticking usually just results in a stoppage of play and a faceoff. Meanwhile, the penalty version of high sticking comes into play when a player makes contact above the shoulders of an opposing player with their stick, with the one exception of the fact that if the player makes accidental contact with an opposing player as either part of their windup or follow through of a normal shot, then that's again just seen as accidental incidental contact and is not called high sticking. However, if they make a wild hack or chop at a puck that's bouncing that they don't have control of, and then hit an opposing player, then that does count whether or not it's accidental. Now, while it is fairly rare with high sticking that this is one that's caused on purpose, usually it is some kind of an accident, because it is often a player's face, unprotected, being hit by a carbon fiber blade, it does have somewhat more of a propensity to cause injury and make someone bleed, which then is the reason that this does have a little bit more likelihood of turning into a major in that kind of scenario. Of course, again, whether or not a minor penalty like high sticking is turned into a double minor or major is at the discretion of the referees, which again, leaves quite a bit up to interpretation. And when it comes to referee interpretation of what to call and what not to call, there is no penalty more controversial and more frequently gotten away with than cross-checking. Put simply, cross-checking is when a player uses the shaft of their stick between two hands to check or hit an opposing player anywhere on their body at any time. The minor penalty enforcement portion of this rule reads as follows. A minor penalty at the discretion of the referee based on the severity of contact 
shall be imposed on a player who cross-checks an opponent. So if you are new to hockey, which if you're watching this video and have gotten this far in it, I'm assuming you probably are, and you find yourself watching maybe one of your first hockey games in this upcoming season, and you see what you think is cross-checking, maybe in a play close to the goal, but nothing's getting called, well, you probably did actually see cross-checking. The thing is, again, this is one that frequently goes uncalled in just about every single game. It really only gets called when it's especially egregious and obvious, or particularly violent, or maybe to a player's back up against the boards, or on occasion happens directly to someone's face. Moving on from stick penalties though to just generally physical type of penalties, we'll start with the third most common type of penalty in roughing. Now roughing is a penalty called for general unpleasantness of the physical variety between two opponents. Usually this comes in the form of one player punching another in the face with or without their glove on or removing an opponent's helmet. Now this is different from fighting, that's a whole nother thing that we'll get into with the major penalties in the next video. This is pretty much more just one-off incidents rather than the full-fledged fight. And frustratingly with roughing in particular, this is another penalty that comes with a healthy serving of gray area and referee interpretation in what gets called and what doesn't. Now, going back to cross-checking for just a second, one of the reasons that it doesn't super frequently get turned into a major penalty is because one of the most common ways that a player can get hurt from a cross-check is if they were also boarded. Now, boarding is a penalty that can also be assessed as a minor penalty, and is called when a defenseless player is hit or checked into the boards by an opponent in a dangerous or violent way. Now, because of the nature of this penalty in that it's a hit on a player who likely doesn't see the hit coming or otherwise has no way to brace themselves for the hit and is slammed into the boards, which is what the walls around a hockey rink are called that are made out of hard plastic and plexiglass, this is one that can fairly frequently turn into an injury for that player and as a result can definitely get turned into a major penalty much more frequently than many others. So for that reason and because we have a few more minor penalties to get to, we'll talk maybe a little bit more about boarding when we get to major penalties in the next video in this series. Some other less common of these physical type of penalties include charging where a player takes a few strides or jumps before hitting another player, contact of the head, which is pretty self-explanatory, you're also not allowed to knee or elbow an opposing player, and there's also clipping, which if you're familiar with what that is in football, it's pretty much the same thing in hockey, you're not allowed to dive at the knees of an opposing player from any direction. Again, with any of these, they can be turned into a double minor or major penalty depending on the severity of the infraction but there are a couple of minor penalties that are just minor penalties no matter what. Although, it would be pretty funny if a team got a major penalty for having way too many men on the ice, but no matter how many men you have over the five allowed, it's just a two-minute minor penalty. Although, the Sabres did recently test that by having ten guys on the ice, but again, still just a two-minute penalty. With too many men on the ice, again, this one is somewhat self-explanatory. It's just called on a team when they have more than the five allowed skaters on the ice at any given time. The only somewhat tricky part about this is that with line changes, a player is allowed to enter the ice by having both their skates touch it once the player that they're replacing is within five feet of the bench. So usually this one ends up getting called due to a botched line change like what happened with the Sabres, where guys enter the ice before the player that they're replacing has gotten close enough to the bench. It is, however, one of the rare minor penalties that isn't attached to a specific player. So when a team is caught for having too many men on the ice, they get to pick one of those guys on the ice to serve the two minute penalty in the penalty box. Another one of these two minute minor no matter what type of penalties is the delay of game penalty, which can be called for a number of different things, but is most commonly called for a player shooting the puck over the glass without it having touched the boards at all. But it can also get called on a player for intentionally falling on the puck to stop play or trapping it with their stick, 
and that does include the goaltender if they are noticeably outside of the crease. And finally, there's unsportsmanlike conduct, which can get called for all sorts of different things, and if you're familiar with any other sports, you can probably figure out what some of those are. There's also diving, which is the NHL's embellishment policy for, well, let's just say preventing hockey from turning into soccer on ice. And while I have up until this point intentionally, for the most part, avoided referencing NHL referee culture, in spite of everything that happened in the 2021 season, let's just say when it comes to the embellishment penalty, while this is just a two minute penalty on the face of it, it can also come with that player earning a bit of a reputation, especially if they do it more than once, or if they do it to the wrong official. To the point where, let's just say, certain officials may be less likely to have calls go in that player's favor down the road, even if they probably should have drawn a penalty. Which you might think sounds kind of stupid and petty, not to mention the fact that it makes things more confusing not just for fans, but for players and coaches to have an idea of what's going to get called in the future. And, well, I, yeah, it, it is. Now, there are quite a handful of other minor penalties for all sorts of different things that are pretty rarely, if ever, called. So I haven't quite gone over every minor penalty, but these are at least the ones that you're likely to see over the course of a season. So if you have made it up until this point, thank you very much for watching. If you did like or enjoy this video, there are buttons for that kind of stuff down below. If you have any questions about any of these penalties or one that you think you've seen that I didn't cover here, do feel free to leave that down in the comment section below. Otherwise, I hope to see you next time, maybe for the major penalties or any other video. Until then, stay safe out there and stay out of the penalty box.